Hey Covenant Community Church, Jordan here, and I uh, just wanted to uh, share a follow-up video um, after our message on Sunday where we talked about Jonah. And we, we, you know, we talked about Jonah and the whole book as being kind of really a satire of, of what a prophet is supposed to be. It's a satire of the normal prophetic narrative. Um, and more than that, it's, it's really kind of a dark comedy. It's, it's funny. It's very funny. Jonah is this prophet who just can never get it together. But it's, it's also kind of a tragedy. It doesn't end with the normal sort of resolution that we like to see in our stories. We like to have our stories kind of tied in a nice bow. Uh, characters have a complete full arch, arc, whatever. Um, and they're off on their merry way. They live happily ever after. We don't get that with Jonah. We don't get a resolution to his character, and that can be unsatisfying sometimes. But, you know, this happens sometimes in Scripture. Uh, scripture will leave a character unresolved. And as we're looking at this in the series, People in Progress, the real strength of that is that it turns these characters into kind of a mirror for our own life. And so as we look at Jonah, this really tragic, funny but tragic character, I think Jonah can serve as a mirror into our own lives. So I have a few questions for us based off of the life of Jonah uh, that we can use to sort of examine ourselves and our own lives as we dive into uh, the Word of God. So how is Jonah a mirror for us? And, and so I want, have a few questions to, that, that we can use Jonah as a mirror. So with Jonah, we see he has this, really he despises Nineveh. He does not want to go to Nineveh because he doesn't want God to show them grace. And so my question for us, as we think about Jonah, maybe we don't experience that to the extent that Jonah does, to the almost extreme and ridiculous extent that Jonah does. But for us, who is our Nineveh? Who is our enemy? Who is that other uh, that we don't uh, feel comfortable with? Maybe it's a people group. Maybe it's a person. Um, but that's a question that we can think about both individually, we can think about as individuals, maybe there's another person that you're having a really hard time with, is difficult to love, but we can also think about communally. Who in our culture is the other? Uh, uh, who in our culture uh, do we pinpoint as that group and mar purposefully marginalize and don't want to reach out to? So think about that. Who is your Nineveh and who is our Nineveh? Second question is who is what, who or what is our Israel? You know, Jonah, we talked about on Sunday repeatedly, uh, shows some what we would call theologically Zionist tendencies. Zionism being this mindset that our place is God's place, that our pla and place is God's place. And obviously Israel was God's chosen people. Uh, he chose to inhabit amongst them. Uh, but it was, a, it was a mistake to believe that he was only there. God reiterates this time and time again, uh, that he was not confined to one place. And we still do this today. Uh, we still think that we can somehow hold God in a box and that he's within our, our sort of box that we keep him in. What's your Israel? Where do you keep God? Is it in your theology? Is it in your denomination, your church? Is it in... Uh, your culture? Uh, do you think God is more at home in America? Do you think God is more at home in Western culture? Where do you keep God in a box? That's me making a box poorly right there. Um, where is your compassion? Jonah frequently, you know, throughout this entire story shows a lack of compassion. Uh, he, when the, the sailors are trying to save themselves and each other, uh, he's asleep. Uh, he shows no compassion for the Ninevites. He only shows compassion kind of for himself. Where is our compassion resting at? Where, where do we find ourselves showing compassion or where do we find ourselves lacking compassion? And how can we, uh, by the grace of God, stir up that compassion, maybe for people groups that are, for us Ninevites, uh, that we wouldn't normally want to, to reach out to. Maybe that's an exercise that we can do to purposefully show compassion to a group of people that we would normally not reach out to. Ask yourself, where is your compassion? And as a society, where does our compassion lie? 
And lastly, do you really believe that God loves and cares about humanity, the world, and, and, and even as we see in Jonah, God uh, interacts with the animal kingdom as well. It, you know, that's one of, of the, the things that Jonah finally reveals that he has a problem with. He has a problem with the, the, with the fact that God is gracious and has steadfast love. And so we, we come to this point where we have to really wrestle with. We, we often have, pit ourselves against the world oftentimes. But the heart of God is for us to be not against the world, but for the world, to be loving the world and, and caring for them. Yes, there are things in this world that are wrong and unjust that we need to fight against, but there are also, God speaks of Nineveh as this great, important city. For us, do we really believe that God lo loves this world so much so that he gave his only begotten son? Do we really believe that? And if we do, where are we maybe falling short on showing that? So there's some questions for us to ask ourselves today as it relates to Jonah being a mirror into our own lives. They're tough questions because Jonah's a tough book. Like I said, it's unresolved, which ends it on a sort of a, a bad note, a dis discordant note. But I think it can really impact our own spiritual lives and the way in which we interact with this world. So I hope you guys are all having a safe and blessed week. And I encourage you to think about Jonah this week and how it can spur you to be a better person.